I am here with one of my favorite prospects in the game, Adam Fugit. Adam, what's up? How are you? Not much, man. Just uh, finished up a morning session. I'm waiting for uh, a yoga class. It's active recovery today. So. Oh, yoga, man. You know what? I tried yoga one time in my life, and I almost broke my neck doing that headstand thing. It was awful. I hated it. Right. <laughs> I try to stay away from that. Just do the, the simple stretching and, you know, keep the body moving. That's all the day's about. Yeah, it's wise. It's wise. It's smart, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> LFA 51, September 28th. As we were talking before the interview, LFA is a big show, big opportunity. How does it feel? Dude, it's awesome. I, I've been waiting for this opportunity for a while now. Um, I'm just kind of, I'm grateful that things have fallen into place like they, they are. Um, you know, um, I quit my, my, my day job back in July to, to chase this thing full time. So for this to come along like it has, it's, it's just a blessing, you know, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's awesome, man. That's awesome. So typically, and you've done very well as a welterweight. If I recall, I believe this fight is at middleweight, correct? It is. Has that affected very much or, or not really? No, not really. I mean, it's made me a, <laughs> it, it's made me a little bit more tolerable in, the, tolerable in the gym, you know. I'm, I'm not dieting quite as hard. Um, yeah, I think I'm much more of an enjoyment here <laughs> right now at this point in the camp, you know. Uh, you know, working just as hard, you know, getting an extra practice in still. So it's great. So, so do you plan on, uh, you know, sticking at middleweight after this fight or kind of whatever opportunity comes up? Uh, I don't. I plan on getting back down to the welterweight division, you know. Um, this was just kind of opportunistic. I've seen the matchup, like the matchup. He's a, you know, stand-up guy. He likes to stand up. I, I don't mind standing up. I'll go wherever the fight takes it. And, uh, you know, I just really like the matchup. And it was a foot in the door with LFA, which – you know, that's where I want to – that's the kind of jumps I need right now. I want to get noticed. I want um, the opportunities to keep coming my way. So, yeah. So, obviously, when I was looking at this fight card, I love LFA because they do a great job of promoting young prospects like yourself. And when I saw this matchup, I, because I've, I've heard of your opponent, of course, and I thought – because, obviously, so I saw you had a Muay Thai fight a couple of years back, and you did, like, a spinning elbow knockout. I've been a fan ever since that fight. But I definitely think that this will be a stand-up war. For sure. Yeah, I think it will, too. You know, he uh, he likes – he's a southpaw as well. He likes to throw the big left kick. I love the left kick. You know, that's one of my favorite weapons. But, yeah, you know, um, I can't believe you, you, you seen me back then, man. Yeah, that was been some years ago. And, yeah, that was, uh, that was a crazy night. You know, things fell my way. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I think that, you know, I'm going to go in there and, you know, do what I do best and, and I hope, you know, I'm anticipating the fall my way this time, too. Yeah, yeah. So, Kalen Hill, uh, obviously, as you said, he is – I would consider him more of a stand-up fighter. But what parts of his game, what parts of his stand-up do you plan on exploiting? Honestly, um, in close, you know. I might be long, but I really like elbows. I've grown to love them. You know, elbows and knees and uh, sweeps, you know. If he – He's not – if he's too heavy on his feet, he's going to get swept to his back, you know, with, with something like a Muay Thai sweep or a trip or – you know, um, I wrestled for many years. Look, be ready for him. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Actually, I was going to bring that up because one thing I really like seeing with, with these, I mean, fighters in general, you have to be a wild round. Like back in like UFC one days, you could be really perfect at one area and not know any other thing. Today, today, mixed martial arts, you have to be well rounded. For sure. And that's, I, that's honestly what I'm trying to do with my style is, you know, um, be just well-rounded everywhere mix it you know I want to be a mixing pot of skills you know um, I don't feel like it helps me to to just solely focus on like a boxing game or a, a Muay Thai game or a wrestling game you know I want I want to be able to transition between all of them and fluid you know be fluid in it I always say this if you have a wrestling background you're bound to do good things in the sport because as you know as anyone knows if you feel threatened on the feet you can just you dictate the fight wherever it goes it's up to you that's right, man. That's why I, I did the Muay Thai for so many years is, uh, you know, I, I jumped in here because I had been grappling forever. I jumped into my, my, my home now, my gym now, and, and got just handled in Muay Thai, you know, by this fighter. And, you know, I was like, wow, every fight stands on, starts on its feet, and I got to get comfortable here. So I did that. You know, I, I chased that, that uh, dream for a little bit in Muay Thai, you know, and, uh, and really honed my skills there. And, and it's just done wonders for me, you know. Yeah. Uh, now I mix both Muay Thai and strike, or striking and uh, ground game, and I love it.
Yeah, well, it makes you a complete fighter. So I'm going to make the assumption, obviously, that mixed martial arts is the avenue you're going to be focusing on. But would you, I mean, if the opportunity ever come up, came up, would you maybe consider stepping back in the uh, ring? You know, I've thought about it time and time again. And, uh, you know, I, I won't, I won't put, say no to it, you know. There's definitely the time and place, you know. It, that time and place was actually pretty close here, you know. I wasn't really getting the fights lined up like I wanted to. I was getting a little worried, like, oh, crud, I made this jump, and is something going to happen? What's going to, you know. So, yeah, I mean, it was potential there, you know. I want to stay active. The main part is, you know, if there's too far, in, you know, too far between fights, then maybe I'll do it, you know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So I hate asking this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. We be, I, mean, I, I hate asking it because it's impossible to predict the future, but how do you think this fight's going to end? Because in my opinion, I think it's going to stay on the feet and, and it's going to be in a knockout. That's my opinion. For sure. Um, honestly, I plan to, you know, I look for the finish in every, every fight, to be honest. I, I'm a pressure fighter. I'm up in your face. I'm really, you know, trying to push that, you know, agenda, you know, of getting that stoppage or getting that finish and, yeah, man, I, I don't go into any of the other fight not planning on doing that, you know. It's it's kind of uh, frustrating afterward, you know, a fight that goes the distance and, you know, um, there's potential. I look back and there's potential to get a stoppage, you know. I kick myself in the pants every time. I, I want to get some finishes. That's the only way, you know, you get noticed around here is if you're stopping people. Yeah, of course, of course. So if this fight, you know, within the LFA ends in a finish, regardless, it's going to be impressive. I just have a feeling – and, and I actually think that you fought – I think your only loss as a pro was to Austin Vanderford, who was on the Contender Series, I believe. So if you get this win here, especially on the big stage like LFA, where do you think that kind of puts you? I don't know, man. I just hope that, tra you know, the tra trajectory keeps going up. LFA is a great show. I, I, I you know, they put on a lot of shows. I want to get back with them, you know. I hope that they like the product that I put out there and, you know, maybe – I just want to keep moving upwards, you know. I want to fight, you know, the, the best people that they put in front of me, you know. I'm not turning away anything. So, um, the goal is always to, you know, reach for the stars. And, you know, I, I want to hit that that UFC, you know, that run there. Look for that title. But, you know, right now, Galen Hill's on my mind. He's in front of me. He's on the tracks. And, you know, I got to go through him to get to where I need to go. So, you know, that's what I'm focused on. Perfect, perfect. Well, people are going to be watching this fight uh, around the globe. People are going to be, you know, in attendance. What should we expect to see from you? Oh, man, just grit, grind in your face. Um, there's going to be action, you know. It's, I don't put on boring fights. I don't feel like there's any promotion or any any fan out there that's seen me fight that can say that I'm a boring fighter. You know, I, I plan on putting on a performance, you know. Um, fight of the night, knockout of the night, whatever it might be, you know. Yeah. That's what I do is go out there and, and deliver something that people are like, wow, that was that was awesome to watch, you know. I'm not a point fighter, so. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So before we go, obviously, your, your weight division typically is well toyed, so I have to get your thoughts on this one. Tyron Woodley and Darren Till, what were your thoughts on that fight? Oh, man. Uh, my – my my boys here at the gym, they, they all think that I got this kind of Darren Till kind of style, and I think it's just a softball thing. Uh, you know, Woodley, man, he's he's made a name for himself with his wrestling, and then he developed that big right hand. And, you know, I, I honestly thought Till was going to give him a little bit more of a puzzle on the feet because he's not a, a Stephen Thompson. He's going to put pressure on you. He's going to, you know, he's going to. He's got his own set of skills, you know, big left hand, you know, great elbows. I didn't expect it going down like it did, um, but I guess I shouldn't have been – you know, I shouldn't – Tyron Woodley's a champion, man. He's a stud. You know, I knew that he had the skills to put Till away, but I thought we were going to see a little bit more of him having to really um, chess match him, you know, take him down, beat him up on the ground for a little bit maybe the round two which starts and then maybe we see, you know, Tyron, um, <laughs> Tyron put him away. Um, yeah. You know, but I didn't expect it to go down the first round like that. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Broken. I mean, 
the thing is, is I, I know Ty Willie. I've known him since like his strike force days before, actually when he fought Nate Marquardt, right before that fight. And it's really, really great to see how much he's improved. But I honestly, because the, pro the only problem I'll say that Woodley has is sometimes the pressure gets to him. So like, it depends on which Woodley shows up. You either have the one who's too hesitant and won't throw, or you have the one that's like freaking explosive that will knock out Jay Huron in like 10 seconds. So I, I thought, I'm, I'm with you though. I, I kind of thought Darren Till, I didn't think Till would win. But I thought that he had more of a chance. I mean, because he just got obliterated. Like, he got whooped. And I didn't think it would be that much of a one-sided fight. I thought we'd see a little bit more of, like, the Rory McDonald fight against, you know, um, against Tyron. You know, that's what I thought, you know. But, yeah, when you come in with your, your hands down, your chin up, you're going to get clipped, man. Yeah. So, I got told that. My, my buddy here at the gym is a big Woodley fan, and he kept saying that. He's like, oh, until it comes in with that chin high, it's not good for a right hand. You know, Tyron's right hand is not going to be good. So, I think I, I, I think the only fight to make now uh, within that like top, you know, four or five would be uh, Stephen Thompson and Darren Till. I think that that would be a really good fight. Oh yeah, they they got a rematch. I think you know they already fought once. That was a, a close, close fight. You know, um, yeah, I'd love to see that fight again. Yeah, for sure, hundred percent. Know? Well, I can tell you, Adam, I'm definitely looking forward to your fight. LFA 51, September 28th. The floor is yours. Anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to thank LFA for sure, you know, for sending out the, the invite. And then, um, you know, my sponsors, Evergreen Roofing here in Eugene, um, Hot Valley Brewing, uh, Brad's Cottage Grove Chevy. And, you know, without those guys, without those, those three sponsors really, you know, backing me and, and helping me, you know, this would be tough, you know. Um, it's already tough as it is, but they make it a little, make it a little easier, and I appreciate all the love from those guys.